Okay, so in this video, we will introduce the limit comparison test and present the intuition behind the result. Now, the limit comparison test is very close to the comparison test. The only difference is the limit comparison test is an easier test to apply as, as we will see, we do not have to deal with inequalities and inequalities can sometimes be challenging. Now, you will not always be able to apply the limit comparison test instead of the comparison test. Sometimes you will have, absolutely have to use the comparison test. But as the limit comparison test is usually an easier test, whenever possible, if you can avoid the comparison test, use the limit comparison test instead. So here are the assumptions. We assume that we have two positive sequences, AN and BN. So A1, A2, A3, and so forth, B1, B2, B3, and so forth are all strictly positive. And the only other assumption is that the ratio AN over BN, as N tends to infinity, equals some positive real number. So here K is a real number. K cannot be infinity. So be careful about this. Then, just a beautiful conclusion. The series of AN converges if and only if the series of BN converges. So the idea is you will usually be given the series of AN. These will be rather complicated terms. You can simplify them enough to get a much simpler sequence where the new series will be much easier to handle, usually will either be a p-series or a geometric series. And then, if the new series converges, the initial series converges as well. If the new series diverges, the original series will diverge as well. So let's first present the intuition behind this result and show that it's a very simple and very elegant result. In our next video, we will prove it rigorously which is simply making the intuition a little more rigorous. So here's the intuition. So let's look at the assumption. We're saying that as n goes to infinity, a n over b n equals k. What does that mean? It means that when n becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, the ratio a n over b n becomes closer and closer to k. So that means that when n is large, a n over b n is roughly equal to k. But we can multiply by bn, which means that when n is large, a n is approximately k times bn. So the terms of the sequence a n are roughly just multiples of the terms of the sequence bn. Well, so we can now look at summing these terms. If these terms are roughly these terms for every n, when n is large, that means that roughly when we sum the terms from the sequence a n, it should be roughly summing these terms. As for all intent and purpose, when n is large, a n is roughly k times b n. So if we did ignore the first few terms, then these two sums should be approximately the same. But the point now is that k is a fixed constant, so with respect to n, it is a constant, so we can pull k out of the sum. And now look what we have here. Let me just ignore this part and rewrite the first series and the other series. So the series of AN is roughly a fixed multiple of the series of BN. 
And now look at this. As both sequences are positive, we have two series of positive terms. And we know that when we're summing positive terms, there are only two possibilities. Either the sum is finite or the sum is infinite, right? As we add more and more positive terms, the sum becomes larger and larger and larger. So let's suppose now that this series is finite. Well, then k is a real number times a finite number is just another real number. So the series of an is roughly a real number, therefore converges as well. And so you see, if the series of bn converges, the series of an also converges. But in the other case, what if the series of bn diverges? Well, it has to be infinite. But if this is infinity, a positive multiple of infinity, as k is assumed to be a positive real number, a positive multiple of infinity is infinity. So the series of an is roughly infinite, so it's infinite. So if this series is infinite, so is the series of an. And that is our conclusion. We have just shown intuitively that if the series of bn is finite, so is the series of an, so they both converge. If the series of bn is infinite, so is the series of an, and so they both diverge. And that's it. So hopefully, you can appreciate that this is a very intuitive result. And again, you can always remember the intuition instead of the proof that we will present in the next video. You're saying when n is large, a n over b n is roughly k, so a n is roughly k b n. So summing the a n's will be roughly just a multiple of the sum of the b n's. So they have to be roughly of the same order of magnitude. So they are either both finite or both infinite.